I want to share for a few minutes on the six exchanges, well, six great exchanges in the Bible. One of them is a negative exchange, and maybe I wouldn't like to call that a great exchange, but there are five really great exchanges. I want to read Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18, and I know you're going to be helped today to make that transition in your thinking, to make the transition in your believing, to make the transition in your speaking, make the transition in your acting, and that the word I share with you can renew the software of your mind. Because if the software gets renewed, then great things will happen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 8:18. 8, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Praise God for his word. God wants you to remember some things. You've got to have memory joggers. Even God has got memory joggers. And I'm not going to go down that road because it will take too much time. You need to have memory joggers. When God says you must remember, it means you must bring that to the forefront of your mind. And don't let negativity take that place. Remember, thou shalt remember the Lord, Jehovah's capital letters, the self-existing one. But he's your God must remember your God who is Jehovah. Why you must remember him? Because it is he that will give you the power to get wealth. The purpose of that is that he would establish his covenant. It, it's a covenant the issue, which he swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he brings it in today as it is this day. Family getting wealth is not a carnal issue. You have to deal with that in your thinking. That it's not a carnal issue to get wealth. That it is a covenant issue. He's establishing his covenant. So it's a holy issue. It's a covenant issue. It's something sacred. Anything of the covenant is something sacred. It's something that was done in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Getting wealth is not a worldly issue, even though the wicked people are getting wealth. But they're getting it in a wicked way. But getting wealth is not a wicked issue according to the Word of God. It is a spiritual issue for us. So don't think that getting wealth is just something that is natural only. No, the Word of God is spiritual. The Bible is spiritual. The covenant is spiritual. So getting wealth must be a spiritual issue in your thinking. Don't only think praying, singing, worshiping, preaching, that's spiritual, but going to work is not spiritual. Doing business is not spiritual. No, sometimes that may be even more spiritual because you're exchanging your life for money. That's the bottom line. You exchange your time for money. And at one level, time is life. You can measure life by time you live on the earth. So you're exchanging your time for money. So don't make light of that. Don't sell yourself short if you're a businessman. God teaches you how to profit. And he leads you in the way you should go. So you see that it's a spiritual issue because it's a life issue. And then the purpose of getting wealth is to establish God's covenant that he made with Jesus on your behalf. So you are in covenant with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is a covenant issue. Firstly, God gives you the power to get wealth to make you wealthy. And that's how he establishes his covenant. You need to know that, that God needs to establish his covenant. It's no good God making covenant with you 
and it's not established. So it's established by giving you the power to get wealth. So you getting wealthy is God establishing His covenant with you. And then, secondly, God gives you the power to get wealth in order that you may be a God end time financier. And that's how He establishes His covenant by you. By you bringing in finances for the provision of God's purposes in the earth. So you can't do that unless he first makes you wealthy. So establishing his covenant is making you wealthy. We said this morning you are called to eat at the king's table. You should listen to that message. I listened to it twice after the service. Anna sent me an SMS and said it's the greatest message that I've ever preached. And he's been with me for 29 years. You should listen to it over and over and over again. Very powerful. God wants you to live in the king's palace and to eat bread on the king's table, baked in the king's palace every day of your life. And it's not just any bread. It's a word of God rightfully divided. If you don't rightfully divide it, you're going to be ashamed because that a word of God rightfully divided is a working word for you. And so, God gives us power to get wealth. That means He gives you the ability to get wealth. Some people think power is zzz, 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 zzz only. Falling on the floor. Rolling on the floor. Getting slain. Okay, it can manifest like that. I'm not making light of that. But ability gives you the ability to go into the marketplace and do business. That's the ability that God's giving you. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you an ability how you can do transactions. How you can do your job excellently. How you can price correctly. How you can factor in your tithe into your contract. And when you factor in your tithe into your contract and your offerings into that contract and when you get it, don't eat the tithe because your tithe is your protection. You should never sow seed without tithing because the devourer eats the seed. That's when God said, I'll rebuke the devourer. That word devourer means seed eater. So your tithe is your protection for your harvest. And so that is very powerful. Getting wealth is a covenant issue. What does covenant mean? Covenant means exchange. God became like us, so we can become like Him. That's the exchange that takes place. There are laws of exchange in the natural, and there are laws of exchange in the spiritual. Laws of exchange in the natural is like when you go to buy your groceries in the shop. By the way, congratulations, Lizzie, we're on buying your new car. We're very proud of you. And she sent me a message and showed me the car. And she said, I paid cash for it, Dan. I don't owe anything on it. Wow, 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 wow. But she didn't get the car unless she paid for it. So that's the exchange. The car came to you because you exchanged your money for the car. And anything in life, you use money as a means of exchange. For goods and services. You can't get goods and services without money. <laughs> you'll have to be a beggar. Or you'll have to steal. Or you'll have to borrow and forget to pay back. And so, if you don't want to come through that way in the law of exchange, you may end up in prison. Because you become a criminal. So you've got to understand how the laws of money work in the world system. You supply people with goods and services and they exchange their money for your goods and services. So your goods and services must be excellent. And you've got to be an excellent person because there's no greater advert than a satisfied, company, uh, uh, a satisfied um, customer. Thank you, Erwin. No greater advert than a satisfied customer customer. 
there's no better position for you to get an increase than a satisfied boss. When you satisfy your boss, he'll want to give you an increase. Just come and help me with this cord here at the back. When you satisfy your boss, put it on the other side rather. When you satisfy your boss, he'll give you an increase. But some Christians want, hallelujah, praise the Lord, increase without satisfying their boss. Without being a, a, an excellent person. Coming late to work. Stealing the pens. Stealing this and that in the, church, in the business. I mean, even in the church office, people can steal some things. And so anyway, let me not go down. I want to stay in the positive ray. And you wonder why God is not blessing you. you you're not going to get blessed through the world system. You're going to be blessed in the kingdom of God. He's called you to glory and called you to excellence. God is your only source. So there's the laws of exchange, the law of money, the law of finances that operates in this world that we live in. In the kingdom of God, God operates by covenant. And covenant is an exchange. Must understand that family. Covenant is an exchange. God became like us so we could become like God. Let's look at these six exchanges. Five of them are great, and the and, uh, first one is really a negative one. The first exchange is from righteousness to unrighteousness, from life to death, from being blessed to being cursed. That was the first exchange that was recorded in the Bible. God created man in his own image, after his own likeness, and gave man dominion. God planted a garden, and in the center of this garden was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God said to Adam, you can eat freely of every tree. And think about it. Even the tree of life was there. Jesus was there. You could eat freely of any tree, many other trees, a garden full of trees planted by God himself. But he says there is this one tree. You must not eat it. But if you eat of this one, that day you'll die. So Genesis 3 opens up with the devil coming to Eve. And he was subtle. Satan is subtle. He says, what did God say? So Eve started entertaining the devil. Bible doesn't say where Adam was. Adam should have been right there by his wife. You see, if you're not right watching your wife, she'll get deceived. And so you are called to be a watchman in your home. Don't be foolish now. We are not saying women are not equal to men. But two is better than one. And you young people need to get married properly to somebody that will not suppress you and, and dominate you. Somebody will, you give one another space. The Bible says husbands love your wives. And wives submit to your husband. But before that it says submit to one another. That means I must submit to Anne. And Anne must submit to me too. We submit to one another. And then that can work. If you don't submit to your wife. And you just want to be the head. How is that going to work? There are some areas of life. It's a wife that's involved there, you know, especially in, in terms of motherhood and all these things in the house and everything like that. And so, but there's some areas where as a man, you're the prophet, priest, and king of your family. You're the one that allows things or disallow things. And so every woman needs a man like that. And uh, you need to take your responsibility. I don't know where Adam was. Some, women, some men are just absent, absenteeism. They're there, but they're absent. They don't even know everything their wife says is right. And yet it's not all right. And nothing that, not everything that the man says is right too. So your wife must be there to bring you in line. You know, sometimes I think Ma Anne is the only one that's correcting me. And you know, you want to get cross sometimes and my wife corrects you, but you must pull yourself back. Control yourself and listen to what they say. Because women have got a wisdom that you don't have. And so God, two is better than one. 
and it's very, very powerful when you marry correctly. We've had to work through some things and still working through some things. But thank God for our young people. They are coming through. So Satan deceived Eve. Showed him. He said, Satan said, you shall surely not die. It says, God knows in the day you eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. God doesn't do evil. And so he was really questioning Eve's identity. And so you're a son of God, even if you're a female. And you're an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're not inferior at all. She said, God gave you a female body for reproduction and for pleasure. And so some of you need to get in a hurry and get married. But anyway, thank God for those that got their pillow next to them. And so I feel sorry for some of you that sleep on an empty bed. But anyway, let's back into the Word of God. Let's not only stay in the natural here. And so the Bible says of Eve, when she saw that it was good for food. You see, the devil wants to get through your eye gate. This thing looks good. Even sex outside marriage can look good. It can rev you up. And then it was a tree desired to make one wise. Oh, if I can sleep with somebody, hey, I'll have an experience. No, you have your experience on your marriage bed. You do it the right way. I believe there is no more harmful sin than adultery. There is no sin that destroys, shatters the soul like the sin of adultery. And you need to keep yourself pure. You need to keep yourself for your husband. And you need to keep yourself for your wife. If I remember carefully, I hope I'm right, both Erwin and Sheshmi married as virgins. And it blessed me, both of them. And so their marriage bed was sacred. And so if you've made a mistake, God has forgiven you. Don't go into condemnation. But you make up your mind from this place, God's restored your virginity, both male and female, in Jesus' name. And you're going to live right. And so through that one sin, sin entered into the whole world. And so we saw that first, first law of exchange is that Satan questioned the identity of Eve. Don't ever succumb to the devil questioning your identity. The second great exchange, second exchange, which was a great exchange, was from unrighteousness to righteousness. Because it was from righteousness to unrighteousness. So God had to send Jesus to bring us from unrighteousness to righteousness, restoration. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Many people don't know the difference between forgiveness and remittance. Righteousness is very, very powerful, my friend. When you walk in righteousness and you're skilled in the word of righteousness, you see there can be forgiveness, but there still can be a record of your sin. But remittance is more than that. There is no more record and your innocence is restored, even though you were guilty. So the blood of Jesus not only forgives you, but remits your sin. And you are made innocent. You you just as if you've never sinned. you the righteousness of God. And the second great exchange, the medium of exchange is by faith. I mean, in fact, all these exchanges I'm sharing with you, and the main law is the law of faith. Just like money is a medium of exchange for goods and services, faith is a medium of exchange for a sinner to become a saint, for an unrighteous person to become righteous. Then the third exchange, and I've got five minutes and I've got to finish six. Third great exchange is from being cursed to being blessed. You've got to understand this. Some people are righteousness of God, but they're still operating under the curse. 
you are blessed. You are not cursed. Blessed means you are anointed to prosper. You are empowered to prosper. Cursed means you are anointed of the devil to fail. Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for you. As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abram might come upon the Gentiles. That you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so the blessing is that you've got the Holy Spirit who's anointed you to succeed in life. Work with that anointing. It's an unction. It's an empowerment for you to be the best in your field. So you run your race. Your race is not my race. You've got your own unique race. You make your mind up. I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I'm full of the power of God. I'll be the best in my race. I'm not competing with anybody. I'm competing with myself. I'm competing with myself that I'm the best preacher for me. The best. At 72, it's going to be 73. I'm still, I'm still pressing to be the best of me. The best of me is still coming out. Look at my shirt, how beautiful it is. None of you even clapped for that. But anyway, I'm the best. I'm the dress the best. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The third great exchange is to the exchange from being cursed to being blessed. You receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Understand it's a Holy Spirit that destroys the yokes, lifts the burdens off your shoulders. That's that anointing. That's that empowerment. Don't only think anointing is only for preaching or for, or for singing or, or for, for, the, for doing things here in serve. No, anointing is for you to do your business. You know, anointing is for you to work for your boss. You're anointed for that. God calls you for something you've got to do. And you have an unction to function. That's what anointing is. You have an unction and empowerment to function in your field. So you depend on that anointing. And so the third exchange is you're moving from being cursed to being blessed through faith. And you receive the promise of the Spirit. The fourth exchange is from poverty to prosperity. You see, when Adam fell, then he became poor. Then the human race became poor. But Jesus Christ came to break the shackles of poverty over our lives. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. He took your poverty upon him. That you, through him being made poor, through him, his poverty, you become rich. It's an exchange. The Bible says, you know the grace of the Lord. So be to be delivered from poverty, the medium of exchange is grace. It's undeserved favor. It's a favor of God. Every time you see the ugly head of poverty popping up, you need to have faith in the grace of God. You see, you, there's a part you've got to play in this. God does his part, but he's not going to do your part for you. And so there's a medium of exchange. You've got to use the medium of exchange. A medium of exchange from poverty to prosperity. The Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. You've got to know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the fifth exchange is from sickness to health which is a righteousness, consciousness, and faith transaction. And so let's read Isaiah 53, verse 5 and 6. Follow it carefully because you can miss it. Keep your antenna out. It's more caught than taught. And if you get sick and you don't know these truths, you're in dangerous ground. And so Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And take note, it says, with his stripes. Read every word of the Bible properly. Don't race through it. With his stripes, you 
are healed. Why? Because Isaiah was prophesying some 750 or 40 years to be correct before Jesus was born in Matthew. So it was an Old Testament prophets, prophecy. So the Old Testament could reach into the future and with the stripes of Jesus still to be striped, they could experience Jehovah Rapha. They could get healing. But verse 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray and everyone and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Take note what Isaiah is prophesying. That's why Jesus went to the cross. It's because you and I had gone our own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. But then 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead should live unto righteousness. Look how Peter is quoting from there, but he changes it. Because now he's, it's appropriation. If you don't know how to rightfully divide the word of God, you, you will struggle to get healed. You'll have to go to the doctor. You'll have to go to have an operation. But I tell you, if you know how to work with the word of God, you don't even have to do that. Now, I'm not saying don't go to doctors because you'll die. But you know, I went for my blood test a week ago, uh, three weeks ago. Because, uh, and then I went for the results. And then the doctor, I'm sitting with Christelle. A thorough, thorough examination. And then he reads all the results. Don't worry about your time now. You're going to miss, miss a revelation because you want to finish it in an hour. Nothing wrong if I go more than five minutes. Don't make me cross about God now because this is sacred ground here. And so Christelle's sitting with me in the doctor's surgery. And he reads out all the vitals. And he says, I had to go through this the second time because there's absolutely nothing wrong with your body. And I said that, I shared that with Nishi. And Nishi shared back to me and says, it's, it's because every organ of yours is filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, yes, that is right. She got a good revelation. When the Holy Spirit is in your organs, no sickness and disease can stay in your organs. And so you're looking at a healthy man, a blessed man, a fulfilled man. And now I want to get slim like Neil and, and like his wife. And, and so I want to run around, you know. I, I want to be like... Uh, Sadeo goes like this and goes like that. Sadeo goes like this in the hand in his pocket. He's doing all that. He hasn't even looked at my shoes. I got crowns on my shoes. And so praise the Lord. Give the Lord Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. Uh, these shoes are all the way from London. Man, check the crowns. Crowns all over. I'm walking and treading and ruling in Jesus' name over sickness and disease. And so Peter says, by whose stripes ye were healed. Isaiah says, we are healed. Peter says, no, it's not are anymore, it's were. So he's appropriating something that has re really happened. And then verse 6, look how he changes it as well. All we like, all we like sheep, for we were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the bishop and shepherd of our souls. So he says, no, no. Isaiah was prophesying why Jesus went to the cross. My appropriation is on this side of the cross. I was like that. I now have returned in the name of Jesus. And the sixth transaction, and I close, is a wealth transfer transaction also through righteousness and faithfulness. There's a wealth transaction. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The word just means righteous. The Amplified Bible says it finds its way into the hands of the righteous. I decree and declare over everyone's life tonight that 
it's no more laid up. It's come to you today. It's coming into your hands in the name of Jesus. I want to prophesy. I want to close this in prophecy. You see, sometimes we can be in such a hurry to close that I don't even, uh, I'm feeling the pressure. I'm feeling pressure to close. And then the most important thing now is, is a prophetic word to release you from the captivity of, of poverty in the name of Jesus. I believe in, pro in, in, in prophesying over your life. Your money's got your name written on it. You receive this word. I said your money's got your name written on it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your money's got your cell number on it. It's got your name. It's got your cell number. You believe it's your money. God gave you money. He gave me power to get wealth. Angels are on an assignment from heaven to bring your money to you. I release angelic forces to open the doors for you, to bring your money to you. Some of you are going to get a contract this coming week. It's going to stagger your mind. Some money that was held up is going to be released to you this week. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Righteousness owns your wealth. You are the righteousness of God. Righteousness attracts your wealth. You see, if you want to be a money magnet, you've got to be righteousness conscious. You've got to be so conscious of you being the righteousness of God. Righteousness receives your wealth. And righteousness supports the kingdom of God with your wealth. In the name of Jesus, I decree this over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, that these exchanges are taking place in your life from unrighteousness to, to righteousness, from cursed to blessed, uh, from poverty to prosperity, and from sickness to health. Uh, and then there is a wealth transfer from the wicked to the righteous. And I see this money coming over, coming into your account, coming to you. Unexpected income is coming unto you. In Jesus' name is done. Done, done, done. Praise God. Give him a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.